Hey guys, what's up? It's Jared Kuber. Welcome to Cubed Season 7, Episode 3. So this is a little bit of a different look as far as the background. I've got the camera at a bit of a different angle for this episode. Uh, since I moved around my entire room, like I talked about in my last video, it forced me to kind of change a couple of my angle setups for my filming area. Anyways, we're going to be starting off this video with our average 12 slash Q&A using the magnetic Valk. This cube is still giving me really good times and I enjoy solving on it. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first question comes from Lava Mark. Would you ever consider making your own magnetic cube by modding? Now previously I haven't really been enthusiastic about making my own magnetic cubes. It seemed to me like it would be a pretty difficult process and the magnets didn't seem to me to be very readily available. However, a lot has changed recently and my opinions have also changed. I would actually be interested in making some tutorials on how to make your own magnetic cubes. Even though I do support the Cubicle Labs puzzles, I think it would be fun for me to try it myself, and I think it would be a fun video for me trying to do it for the first time. So, uh, the first cube that comes to mind is the Yan 3. That might be a good magnetic puzzle, but we'll see. Taku Mi. What is your opinion on Gan's new partnership with Erno Rubik and the possibility of new Gan's made Rubik's brand speed cubes in the future? I think it's a pretty cool idea. We haven't seen anything from Rubik's recently and Rubik's has never been considered a good brand for speed cubes, but I think it would be really interesting to see if Rubik's made like a resurgence and actually started releasing like actual speed cubes in partnership with Gan's. And since Rubik's is still technically the largest cube company because it's the one that most people know about, I think it could provide a lot of possibilities for the expansion of cubing which I think is great, so I'm all for it. SS Cuber, have you witnessed any world records? If so, which ones? Well, I haven't actually seen any records being broken, but I was at Nationals when the Mega Minx world record at single and average was broken. So I was like in the same room, but I didn't actually watch it happen. So no, not really. Kevin Lee, would you recommend somebody a DSLR or a high-end camcorder if they wanted to step up their quality? I would definitely go for a DSLR. Even a low-end one is fine because you're going to learn a whole lot. That's what happened for me. Prior to getting my Canon T3i, I used a camcorder for basically all of my videos. And when I finally took the plunge and got a DSLR, I had to learn so much about how to use it and just how cameras worked in general. And as a result, my video quality got much better. So I would definitely say a DSLR, a low-end one to start with for sure. But high-end camcorders, as far as I know, still mostly use uh, automatic settings, so I would definitely recommend a DSLR. Cubing Anarchy. I've heard of scholarships to college for chess and other brain things. Do you think speed cubing will ever become scholarship worthy? Personally, I don't think so. Mainly because speed cubing, while it is very impressive, a lot of that comes down to repetition, practice, and pattern recognition. You don't have to have a lot of intellect or intellectual ability in order to be fast at speed cubing. Whereas chess requires a lot of strategy and is very difficult intellectually. So yeah, speed cubing, I don't think would fall under the category of being scholarship worthy, no. Rover T Gaming. What cube do you think really revolutionized the market? Well, I'm assuming you're talking about 3x3s and that would definitely be the Guhong V1. That was basically the first puzzle that came out that really changed the design of the pieces away from a Rubik's brand type modification design. And it was the first cube that really allowed for good corner cutting and just overall good performance. And when the Guhong came out, it was vastly superior to anything else at the time and still holds up to this day. The Guhong V1 is still a very good cube. Alvarez 28, what is the most underrated cube and overrated cube? Right now at least, I think that the most underrated cube is the Mojue M3. I don't think enough people have that cube and are using it. I think it's actually a pretty good cube and I'm going to be reviewing it soon. And the most overrated cube for me, the Weilong GTS. I don't know why I did not like that cube at all, but a lot of people loved it and hyped it up a lot and I just don't think it was that great. So those are all the questions I could answer today. If you had a question that didn't get answered, you can leave in the comments and I might answer it next month. So that was a 13.49 average of 12, definitely not bad. As you can see, this cube performs really well as always. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this month's average of 12 slash Q&A. Let's move on to the challenge. So this month's challenge comes from half a QB and he challenged me to solve a three by three with no thumbs. So basically I'm gonna have to hold the cube like this and do turns like that without using my thumbs at all. So this should be a fun challenge. So he did provide a scramble. I've already scrambled the cube with that scramble. So let's go ahead and do some inspection here. 
and we will figure out how we're going to hold this exactly. I think using two fingers will be best. So let's go ahead and go. Oops. No. Ooh, yay, a permutation that I can actually do. There we go, 107, not bad at all. So half a QB got one minute and 15 seconds on that challenge, so I won just by a little bit. So thanks to half a QB for the challenge. If you'd like to submit a challenge for next month, then record a video of yourself doing the challenge and then submit it uh, through the comments of this video. It will get marked as spam, but that'll be easier for me to see because then I can filter by the waiting approval comments and see all of the comments with links in them for the people who have submitted challenges. Anyways, that's how you can submit a challenge for next month's video, and that's all for this month's challenge. So, on to cubing news, we're going to be talking about all the puzzles that released this month in January. Starting off with a new brand called Cube Style. I'm pretty sure it's a sub-brand, but not of Moyu. Anyways, they released a 2x2, 3x3, 4x4, 5x5, and Pyraminx. And they all come in stickerless bright except for the Pyraminx, which comes in black and white and stickerless. Then we've got the Very Puzzle Clover Cube Plus, which is a non-WCA from Very Puzzle, which I'm pretty sure is connected to Fangxi, if I'm not mistaken. And that looks like a pretty interesting edge-turning puzzle. Then we've got the Yushin Huanglong 8x8. This is the final puzzle that we know of in the Yushin Huanglong series. I unboxed it. It's really great. Uh, check out my video if you haven't seen it. Then we've got two new 7x7s from YJ that basically came out at the same time, which is interesting. We've got the Guanfu 7x7, which comes in black and white, and the Yufu 7x7, which only comes in stickerless. Then we've got some more non-WCA puzzles, the Fang Kun House Cube 1, 2, and 3. So these are some House Cube variants uh, based on 3x3 shape mods. Next up, we've got the GAN356 Air UM. So this is a magnetized version of the GAN356 Air that has been mass produced in collaboration with the cubicle. It costs $47.37 because of Felix's world record that he got with a prototype uh, magnetic air. And of course, his time was 4.737, hence the price. I do believe I will be getting this cube, so look out for an unboxing soon. Finally, we've got two cuboids from Wit Eden. These look like some very exciting puzzles and are puzzles that I've wanted for a very long time myself. And they are the 2x2x5 and 2x2x6. But just know that the 2x2x5 is not a true 2x2x5. It just has a layer cut off from the 2x2x6. So it's similar to their 3x3x7 and all of the modifications of that. It was all based on the same mechanism, all really the same puzzle. So it's not a true 2x2x5, which is a little bit disappointing. I really wish it was, but that's all right. The 2x2x6 is something that I've really wanted for for a long, long time. But yeah, these look like some really awesome puzzles and I can't wait to check them out. So that's all for new releases. Let's go ahead and move on to world records. I'm gonna be going over all of the world records that are currently on the WCA. I'm not sure if there's any more that were broken in the last few days that aren't up yet, but these are the ones that are there now. First of all, we've got square one and the world record was broken twice by the same person, one on the seventh and then one the next week on the 14th. So they were both broken by Brandon Lynn. Uh, the first one was a 9.07 and then he broke it with an 8.4. 45 average, which is very impressive. Then we've got 6x6 average and single broken by none other than Felix. These were broken in the same average. The average time was 1 minute 34 seconds 0.68 and the single time was 127.85. Felix also broke the 4x4 average with a 25.97, but the next weekend was broken by Sebastian Ware with a 25.96. 
so one centisecond faster. A lot of people corrected me about that in last month's episode. So it looks like Felix got the same treatment that Matt's got, which is kind of ironic, but still very impressive. So those are all of the world records that were broken this month. If you guys would like to purchase any of the cubes I talked about in this video, the links will be in the description. And if you'd like to see the full world record videos, the links will be in the description for those as well. So that's all for this month's episode of Cubed. If you guys like this video, give it a like. Links to all of my social media and my Patreon are down in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.